Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet nice everyone. To um, first of all, like I love a movie that has good positive messages. And I know that this one, one of them was like love for who they are and not what they look like. And even just in the first 30 minutes of screening, we could see there was a lot more than just that. So I was curious to know what your favorite messages are from the film and what you hope viewers are going to take away. Well, I think, yeah, I think that is absolutely it. And I think yeah. also when we looked around what was, when we were making this movie, there was a lot of division in this country here, but around the world, but, you know, just because people look different or they present themselves or they believe differently. And a lot of that, so a lot of that, there are a lot of discussions about division and how we, our differences, you know, should not divide us, they should bring us together and we should really celebrate other people's differences and embrace our own because it's those things that make us unique, that make us special. So we have this snake who's told you to hate herself because of the way she presents, but actually she comes to learn that this is a gift and this is great. So I guess for me, it was like the opportunity to, you know, to teach children not to be scared or to push away things because they are different, but to spend, take the time to get to know them, to understand them, always go into, you know, with an open heart and an open mind and to, to try to understand the other person and let them understand you, see you for who you really are. So that was. Yeah. And I think for me, it was, you know, exactly that the don't judge a book by its cover or, or by its fangs. Yeah. Um, that, you know, something that may be scary is not really, you know, not going to hurt you if you understand it. Yeah. And also I think where, you know, home is where the heart is. The people that you travel with are often your family. And I think that's as the, a great message that goes on through the movie. Yeah. Um, as well as, you know, you, everyone has something special about them and that special thing could save the day, you know. So yeah. it's, these are all the great, great opportunities to message uh, these things in a, in a comedy, you know, yeah. I think is, is really great. And even just on the animal level, it's also to respect and, you know, of these animals that actually get a bad rap a lot of the time, yeah. snakes and spiders, but actually they're all animals. We're all here on this planet together. We're all sharing it. We all got to, you know, respect each other, whether you're an ant or a bug or a person. So it was, it was respect for the animals and for each other. Hi guys, I'm Amanda from Guide Hi. for Moms and Hi. we loved it. I mean, the only thing I think we were sad about was we only got to see 30 minutes and wanted to see more, but, <laughs> <laughs> Thank but you. Um, my question was for Mr. Cripps is yep. I've recently, I've become a fan of your work. You know, I loved uh, the Penguin Blossom and, oh, and yeah. I thought oh, the thanks. dry was just amazing. And I saw that you were on this one. I'm like, oh, it, why the switch to animation? I was wondering why, and, and also was it a difficult switch? Well, I've, I've been in animation for about 10 years, but, um, but it, purely accident. I was just sent to a studio to just to meet people and I happened to be Australian and they wanted an Australian thing. It wasn't this one. And so it's sort of, I sort of stumbled into animation, but I love it so much because you can, you know, you can do anything in animation. You can, well, the only thing you can't do is have two furry creatures wet hugging each other. That's one of the most expensive <laughs> shots ever. But apart from that, you know, it's, there is no limit to your imagination. And my kids love the fact that I'm in animation too. And I know Claire's got a son who's now an animator at the age of 11 because he watches you. What you well, do. I think it came out of working from home. You know, he was literally over my shoulder when we were kind of, and we did most of this at home when animators were on and he would like, at times when we got to the lighting process, he was like, did you see that there's something wrong there? You know, he's got very good hawk eyes for, for detail. And he just started then, his drawing has just kind of gone on from that as he watched us yeah. make this movie. Yeah. yeah. So I definitely prefer animation to live action, but I do, I love both of those movies you mentioned. Thank you for bringing them up. They were very special and of course, very Australian. Thank you. Well, hello, I was watching those 30 minutes and confession, not a fan of snakes, not a fan <laughs> of spiders. So if you tell me there's gonna be a movie that has them, I'm kind of like, oh. and you managed to make the most adorable creepy crawly creatures for this film. And I was like, 
I love that snake. I want to hold that snake. I would like pet that spider. And how did you go about that making those things that are very scary to people sometimes so cute and adorable and make you root for them? We did. I mean, obviously we had a great script from Harry. He'd written the script, but we sat in our office the first day. We had all of these pictures of the scary animals up there. And it, we did have people like you, Amy, who came in and went, I can't look in that corner, there's a snake, you know, an image of a snake. So we're very conscious that people have phobias of spiders and snakes. And so we worked with our character designer, Jesse Ackland, and we're very clear that we wanted to make them appealing, you know, and make them something that we, we used a lot of the traits that these animals have. Uh, Zoe, who's the horny devil lizard, you know, she has a, a, a fake head on her back she's a kind of a chameleon just to you know to to you know get people scared of her and, and she gets out of things so we used a lot of the traits that they have as their animal traits to make them into you know an escape artist or a spider who's doing mating dances spiders are known for their mating dances so there was like a lot of those things that we used um as we went forward to to make our characters Mm. And I think also kids naturally gravitate towards those kind of animals. You know, they, they're curious about them. I know my kids certainly are. And so it was about sort of drawing them in with the ideas like, ooh, what is that? And then making them totally relatable, like the spider. We wanted to make a young, you know, Frank, he's just a young guy who's not quite comfortable in his own body yet. He can't quite control it. And we, you know, I've got three sons and I know, you know, <laughs> they go through that phase. All kids go through that phase. So it was to make kids go I can relate to something in that animal and they're this also this super creep you know this super cool looking you know lizard with spikes or whatever you know it was a lot of fun it was really fun creating those characters it just sort of brought out the kid and all of us who were doing it and they were really fun to watch thank you no worries and I realized I just jumped into the question before but I'm Sarah with Sarah Scoop and my other question for you guys is um, the animation obviously, you know, brings the characters to life, but also the cast. So I would love to hear a little more about like what it was working with this cast and just anything fun you want to share. We knew we wanted uh, all our animals. To, I mean, majority of them are Australian and we wanted them to have really, you know, we tried a lot of different, uh, put the character up, tried a lot of different voices. But I think when we met uh, Isla, she has such a rich voice quality and she has this extraordinary comic uh, timing we cut we knew that she would embody maddie and she did i mean there was the script but she also brought a lot of lines mm -hmm. you know of her own in there that are really funny that she, you know she would try out and so a lot of our cast really just jumped in you know uh frank uh guy pierce he he knew with the design that these teeth were going to be there and he he just started talking like Frank and trying out you know ideas of how Frank would talk about things and sent us tapes of these to, to get that voice so all of our actors they just were great and we were you know recording them in their homes so also a very intimate thing you know when you do it in a studio you're behind the glass this time we were kind of they were sitting in closets in Amsterdam or you know, uh, hiding out in their closets because the clothing could baffle the sound. <laughs> so they, we, they were they were great sports at uh, creating these characters and and giving them a voice. Yeah. Me again. <laughs> well, <laughs> so as I was watching this, you know, the the park ranger Chaz. I mean, and I first thought of it came to mind is like Steve Irwin, right? The crocodile hunter. And, and as you got to know him, I was like, well, they're not really like that. But did you have just him kind of in mind? Yeah, he's a character I really enjoyed writing, not because he's a particularly nice character, because he's not Steve Irwin. Steve Irwin was an unbelievably kind and wonderful person whose work with animals was prompted by a genuine love of animals. This guy, Chaz, is not. He's a bully at the beginning and he, well, and he exploits them. But the reason I like his character, but he likes to see himself as a Steve Irwin. He wears the tight shorts, he does all that. He's got, you know, he's like the guy trying to be the hero, but he's not really. And, but the reason I like him is he, there is a side to Chaz, which we develop later in the movie. He actually is trying to do the right thing by his son. He's trying to raise a son on his own. 
He's trying to give him messages. They're just the wrong messages. Uh, the old outdated forms of masculinity. You gotta be tough. You gotta hit the other guy before he hits you. This is, we don't need that anymore, you know, but he is struggling. And you find out later in the film, he comes to understand what it, you know, what he really should be doing. Because part of these, all these lessons we talk about, you can't judge a book by its cover, tolerance, prejudice, all these things, what we're saying, all these lessons start at home. They start with what we teach our kids or what they learn by, you know, from, you know, what we do and how important it is to send out the right messengers and have these discussions with our children. So we're seeing the wrong discussions coming out of Chaz, but he does, um, he gets better later and we see him evolve the same as all our characters do. But I love the, I love the look. In fact, I've actually got his boots. They're very Australian, <laughs> Blunston boots. The, the designers co copied my boots and uh, they're, they're really cool. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I wanted to mention Australia is definitely on a travel bucket list for me. So I'm hoping that we get to a place where I can visit soon. But meanwhile, watching the film, Australia almost felt like its own character. So I'm really looking forward to seeing more of it was celebrating Australia and making that kind of a additional character in the film, something that was intentional for you. Is that just me bringing my American Australian is foreign to me no. and way into it? No, no, it, it, it was definitely, we wanted to make a, a, it was a love letter to Australia and we do use the actual places, which we really, you know, went to a lot of trouble. Our production designer, Mike Yamada, you know, really wanted to create the magical version of each of these places as you travel from Sydney to the Blue Mountains on into the Genola Caves and out to the Outback. And it was that idea of trying to create the epic nature of the Outback and the vastness of it as, you know, it, again, as you get to see the rest of the movie, you'll see much more of that and the beauty of it. And we really wanted to get that feeling of those little animals out in this vast environment. Yeah. So it was a it was something that was very important to us. You know, they come out of cages and the world gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's uh, that was a really conscious thing that we wanted to depict and show. Yeah. And until you do get out, by the way, they just lifted quarantine. So uh, yeah. Yeah, I was super excited because of two weeks in a hotel room. I did it last year. That was very hard for Harry. It was hard <laughs> on all of us. Yeah. But he had to but go through until, that. <laughs> until you do get out then I do hope you do get to Australia because it really is beautiful. But if you yeah. got your Tim Tams, you can practice sort of some of the local customs. I don't know if you got that pack of Tim Tam biscuits, the things. So what I they did, they lasted <laughs> less than a day, but well, no, <laughs> we'll have to send you some more because you've got to do the Tim Tam suck. And that's where you bite the top and the bottom off the Tim Tam and you put it like a straw into a glass of warm milk. And then you suck up the milk throughout the middle of the Tim Tam and it melts the chocolate and it sort of crumbles into your mouth and it's beautiful. 